All right, howdy everybody. This is Miss Kosh. I want to work through these notes. We'll see how far we get uh, in this video. Um, first of all, so we are looking at, um, well, a sequence is a list of, of terms. So we typically will see um, a sequence is a list of, uh, of numbers that are separated with commas here. Um, yeah, they could be, you can use an expression perhaps. Anyway, um, so there's, there's two main types of sequences that we will study, and those are arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. So notice in this first one, what we're doing here is that we have gone from, we've added three, we've added three, we've added three. To get the next term, we would add three, we would add three. And, um, and so that three is known as our common difference. So with an arithmetic sequence, what we'll find, well, okay, so if I have, you may notice also that this is linear, that there is, when it has a common difference there, um, it also, that would have the same, um, the same slope throughout these. Um, you know what, I probably should back up a little bit farther. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll typically say it's a sub n um, is the one way that we can name our sequence. And this is the, the nth term of a particular sequence, okay? So if you would have, we'd have a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, um, and then somewhere out here is the nth term. And the term that came right before the nth term, well, the term that came right before the 100th term is the 99th term. Um, and so what we did to get from 100 to 99 is we subtracted 1. So this is the a sub n minus 1 term. The, the, I call it the n minus 1th term, and I think it's fun to say because I'm silly. Um, and then the term that would come right after the nth term is the a sub n plus 1. Um, and so it's not like handwriting matters, but it is important that you make these as little subscripts here. Okay? And if you write that, that whole thing needs to be in the subscript. A sub n plus 1 is typically not equal to a sub n plus 1. This is saying you want the, ter the a sub n plus 1, you want the n plus 1th term. This is saying take the nth term and add one more value to it. Okay? So, like, if we had, if our sequence were, was 2, 4, 6, 8, then what we're noticing here is that we're just, multi we're just adding 2 each time that we've got this is the, the nth term would be 2 times n. So this first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term. So the nth term would just be 2n. So there's a difference between, anyway, the, there's a difference between the n plus 1th term right here and then a sub n plus one more. Okay. So on this one, what we will typically find is, um, well, one more thing before we get into this problem. If we look at this, we have n, we have a sub n. When we talk about terms of a sequence, we're looking at positive integers. Okay, so you could have, um, that is the, the term number, it's the value of n, and then you can have, and then, so we say, okay, what's the third term of the sequence? Well, in this particular one, that third term was equal to 20. So I'm looking at this one back here. Okay, so n here is equal to 3. a sub 3 would be equal to 20 is how we would denote that. So that's a little, maybe it's a lot of background information, but I wish you were in my classroom. This would be easy. Um, okay, there goes that. So when we look at this one, we see that we are adding 3 each time. And we'll find in a second that, um, okay, let's, now I don't remember where I want to go with this. Say I want to get the fifth term, and I know the first term. I, what I'm going to need to do, if I want to get to the 1, 2, 3, 4, here was the fifth term. If I know the first term, what I need to do is I need to add that common difference 1, 2, 3, and then a fourth time to get to that fifth term. So a sub 5 would be equal to a sub 1 plus 4d. Or I could say something like, um, you know what, I'm going to get rid of all this for right now. It's just getting too cluttered. Oh, I got rid of too much. This is 26, this is 29. Let's say I want to find the sixth term, but I know the fourth term. Well, this was the fourth term. I need to add the common difference once and twice, and there we go. So notice 6 is equal to 4 plus 2, which is that value, that value, and that value. But Okay. Um, so continuing on, if I have... If I have a sub, n, if I if I know a sub one and I want to get to a sub n, 
what I need to do is, um, well, when we, were, when we were getting to the fifth term and we knew the first term, we had to add that common difference four times. If I want to get to the tenth term and I know the first term, I would add my common difference, pause, come up with the answer, nine times. Okay, if I want the hundredth term and I'm at the first term, I need to add my common difference, pause, get an answer, 99 times. Um, so if, I'm want, if I want the nth term and I know the first term, then I need to add my common difference n minus 1 times. Notice this was 100 minus 1 was 99, and 10 minus 1 was 9, and 5 minus 1 was 4. See how all those numbers work out? This right here, um, this, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, this is actually going to go down here. And an arithmetic sequence with a common, that has a, excuse me, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence with a common, I need the pen, difference. And we typically would use D to be that common difference. We prove an arithmetic, uh, I can't talk today. It's Friday, almost afternoon, and I'm tired. We prove a sequence is arithmetic by showing the, that the, the, the difference, uh, that there's a common difference the whole time. That what we can do is we could say D is equal to A sub N plus 1 minus A sub N. So I take any term in my sequence, and if I subtract the term right before it, I get that common difference. Um, I will talk about recursive in just a second, but the explicit formula we just said was um, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Um, the recursive formula, there's always two things that you have to do for a recursive formula. Um, you have to tell me where to start and what to do. Okay, so you always, if I just tell you add 4, you're like, great, Ms. Kosh, add 4 to what? Okay, so, but if I just tell you, oh, we're starting at 7, you're like, thanks, Ms. Kosh, now what, right? So you have to do these two things, and the way that we write this is we'll say, um, this is the, the, we'll use this little bracket to indicate these two things go together, and in this particular case, what we have is you have to tell me where to start, so you're starting at some particular number. Typically, in that example I gave where I said, um, we're starting at 7 and then we're adding 4. So we would say our first term is equal to 7. Um, and then we would say, okay, what we're doing each time is we're adding 4. So to get, to go from, we'd have 7, we'd add 4, we'd get 11, we'd add 4, we'd get 19, we'd add 4, we'd get 23. We keep going. If I want to get to the nth term, we just, we needed to look back at the term that came right before it, which we said a minute ago was the n minus 1th term. Okay, so the a sub n is going to be equal to the term right before it, a sub n minus 1. What are we doing each time? Well, we're adding that common difference. In this particular case, we said that we're going to come to the n minus 1th term and then add 4. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, what, we, what we say here is, hang on, my brain just stopped. Well, okay, what I wanted to tell you, be careful with handwriting. If you tell me a sub n minus 1 plus 4, that to me looks like a sub n plus 3, which is not the same thing. Okay, so it's not that I'm grading your handwriting, but the way that we write this really does matter. Um, let me look back for a second. Let's, I'll finish part A, and then I'm not sure I'm going to make a video for everything, but I will finish my answer key. Um, Hang on, it's a little cluttered at this point. I need this to stay there. This is clutter. Okay, I'm sorry. If they paid me more, you'd get better videos. So talk to your congressperson. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, that's going to make it to the video. Tell me if you heard me say that so I know that you actually watched the video. Okay, so on this one, to find the nth term, we know... Uh, that a sub n is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times our common difference here. We kept adding 3, if you remember. I typically like to clean this up because, I mean, you don't have to, but I like the fact that this 3n plus 11 looks a little neater. So they said find the nth term, which is 3n plus 11, goes in that space, and then find the hundredth term. So what we can do is we can plug in 100, 3 times 100 is 300 plus 11, so that is that term right there. 
Okay, so here I'm gonna I'll fix the I'll go and do the other two um, later. I don't think you need to watch me do those, but it's the same process. Write the first four terms of the following sequence. On this one, this is that recursive formula. So what they're doing is they're telling me where to start and what to do. Okay, so in this particular one, they're telling them where to start. Well, six, and what am I doing each time? I'm adding two. And there's the next four terms. All right, there's the first four terms. Next three after that, whatever. Okay, then the next one, the other thing that they might do is they might give me this sort of a situation in B sub n. Well, so B sub 1 would be what I get when I plug in 1, which is negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5, so that's the first term. The second term is when I plug in 2, negative 7 times 2 uh, plus 2, that's negative 14 plus 2 is negative 12. I might notice that I'm just subtracting 7 each time, and so negative 19, negative 26. Um, but I can also plug in whatever number I want. Now, if I tell you I want the hundredth term in a sequence, it's a whole lot easier to use the explicit formula here as opposed to the recursive formula. Because in order to find, if I'm looking for a sub 100, to, know, to do the recursive formula, I have to know a sub 99. Well, to know a sub 99, I have to know a sub 98. So I've got to know everything if I, like the whole sequence out there. Whereas if I want the hundredth term in this B sub, say I want B sub 100, that's just negative seven times 100 plus two. And I can get there real quick. So, um, okay, let me see. That can go away. I'll try and, oops. I'll try and clean up. That needs to go away. I'll try and answer these other two, the C and the U one right there, um, after I finish the video. So let's see. Give two terms. Find the nth term. Okay, so on this one, I will go ahead and do this one before I set you free. Um, this is A. So what I know, A sub 11 would be equal to A sub 5 plus 6 times the common difference. And so one way I can think about that is, okay, here's the, the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term. The fifth term is what I know, the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and the 11th term. Notice I've added the common difference 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times to get there. Also, 11 minus 5 is 6. So I can plug into this equation, 35 is equal to 11 plus 6d. Subtract, that's 24 is equal to 6d. d is equal to 4. But I also need to know the first term if I'm going to write the rule. So I know that, but I know that a sub 5 would be equal to a sub 1 plus 4d. So 11 would be equal to a sub 1 plus 4 times 4. That's 16, subtract 16, so a sub 1 is equal to negative 5. Okay, so now my formula was that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So a sub n is equal to negative 5 plus n minus 1. What did we just say d was? 4 times 4. I like to put these parentheses here just in case that that's a negative because had it been a negative, it wasn't. But had it been, it would have looked like if you wrote this, that is not the same thing as this. Okay? So be careful with, um, with using that notation. If you want to clean... Some teachers are fine leaving it there, and I mean, you're not wrong if you stop. It's just a little easier to work with this 4n, that's minus 4, minus 5 is minus 9. And so that is the answer that I prefer. Okay, um, similar process on B. I'll let you go check the answer key. Let's see, define, oh, okay, sometimes they tell you what the term value is, but they don't tell you... Um, what term it is. So the, we, we know that the, we're trying to figure out what is in, what n is here. So we just said that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So that is 101 is equal to 20.5 times n minus 1 times d, 3.5. I, I missed a, Sorry, did you catch my mistake? Um, there we go. Okay, so subtract, what's that? Um, I'm too lazy to think. It's Friday afternoon and I'm tired. Minus 20.5, that's 80, and then I'm gonna divide that number by 3.5. And so I have 23 is equal to n minus one, so I just need to add one. And so that happened to be the 24th term of that sequence. Okay, oh, I think, 
I made a video before with how your calculator can help you. I'll have to go look and I'll make sure I give you access to that. Um, and the same idea with this one. Oh, you know what? Let me say this really fast on, um, on this one, this part B right here. Another thing that we can do is because it's arithmetic, it, things are linear, okay? And so you could think of this as being this, the point 647, where this, where the, the n, where your, your n is your x value and your a sub n, the value of a sub n is your y. And so then you could think of this as the point 17, negative 52, and then you can find slope and go from there. So all of that works the same way. I have done all my answer key. I made the answer key for this before I started the video, um, or the answer key to the practice. Um, and I did not do any of this, the linear method, but, um, you can, there's nothing wrong with that. All right. I will stop at this point, um, and make another video for geometric sequences and I'll let you go practice. I'll try and finish up um, this. So check my answer key, um, so that you can see the missing pieces. Good luck. Go practice. Let me know if you have questions.